Saving seeds is a great way to take your garden to the next level. When you save seeds from your plants, you save money on next year's crop and have a secure supply. By saving seeds from your healthiest plants, you encourage traits that do well in your specific location. Hi, I'm Amy and welcome to my channel where we talk about organic gardening, homesteading, and wildlife conservation. The seed is the very essence of plant life. In scientific terms, the seed is the mature embryo of the plant. And just like any other baby, the seed will develop and grow into a productive adult with proper nurturing. However, when saving seeds, we need to understand a tad about their genetics. Seeds are loosely classified into hybrid and heirlooms. A basic definition would be that heirloom plants reproduce naturally through open pollination. This corn is wind pollinated. Hybrids are created by scientists using cross pollination techniques. Essentially, they are breeding plants. Hybrids are not evil creatures of the night. They are a plant variety that was developed by crossbreeding two different varieties. Like these roses, controversy has developed over time as corporations have bred hybrids solely as a marketing strategy or a way to dominate in the field. Hybrids result from controlled inbreeding and often limit genetic diversity. These seeds do not grow true to the parent plant. You cannot save seeds from hybrids. Hybrids have a letter or number to identify them as F1 and F2. The F is for filial, meaning offspring, and the number shows which generation hybrid they are after controlled cross-pollination. A seed from an F1 hybrid will not produce true to type and an F2 hybrid will produce sterile seeds. If you are growing hybrids, you must buy new seeds every year. This is a distinct disadvantage if you are striving for self-sufficiency. Open pollinated plants reproduce through natural means of pollination, such as insects or wind. Seeds from open pollinated plants can be saved and will grow true to their parent. Having an organic garden is an advantage when growing heirlooms because it will also support insect life. Insects such as bees, butterflies, beetles, and ants all act as pollinators. So yesterday I stopped at the feed store to get my horse rocket a bag of grain and of course I have to go into the plant section. I purchased a four pack of these peppers called Lady Bell primarily because they said does well in containers on the tag. Hopefully this content has been helpful so far. Please give this video a thumbs up to share it with others. My daughter-in-law is putting in raised beds and she loves peppers. Anyway, this is what the tag looked like. No, inf no information about hybrid status. So when I got home, I looked it up and found it on Fedco which is a great seed company with wonderful descriptions. And lo and behold, it's a hybrid. So just a lesson to make sure you find out the hybrid or heirloom status for anything you want for seed saving. We typically grow much of what we raise, but it's always fun to try something new. When saving seeds, it is important to learn something about plant pollination and reproduction. Self-pollination means the plant accepts its own pollen and does not need an outside source, such as a bee, to complete the pollination process. Such plants include beans, peas, oats, lettuce, wheat, and tomatoes. Seeds from these plants are easiest to save because there is little danger of cross-pollination. Beans are an excellent plant to start with. The seeds are easy to handle and there is little chance of cross-pollination. However, it's best practice to plant bean varieties at least 10 feet apart. Check your seed packet to make sure it is an heirloom variety. Save seeds from healthy, vital plants. Dedicate which plants you want, De sorry. Dedicate which plants you will allow to mature 
and stop picking beans from them. With green beans, allow the pods to fill out. The pods will start to dry and turn yellow. Keep an eye on them as they start drying out. You don't want the bean pods to split open and deposit the seeds on the ground. I typically pick the pods when they start yellowing and complete the drying process in the shed. Once the pods are dry, break them open. Throw away any seeds that aren't perfect. So any that have insect damage are off color or smaller than the rest. Any type of drying rack will do. I used an old screen door set on sawhorses for years. This one is individual screens that slide into a shelf unit. I also really like the hanging ones that are all self-enclosed so bugs don't land on the seeds. Tomatoes are also self-pollinating and easy to save seeds from. There's just a little bit of a process to separate the seeds from the pulp. Cut the tomato in half and scoop out the seeds. The gelatin surrounding the seeds will come out too. That's okay. Our next step is to help them separate. Now you want to place your tomato seeds and pulp in a warm spot like where you put bread to rise. Outside is good, but not in direct sun. What's going to happen is the pulp will begin to ferment. During this process, the seeds will separate from the pulp. This is important. Bad seeds float. Good seeds sink. When you see the seeds have separated, you will skim off the fermented goop and bad seeds that are on the top. Then put the good seeds in, the, in a sieve and gently run cool water over them. Once clean, place them on a coffee filter or cheesecloth to dry. This takes about a week, so find a safe out of the way place with good air circulation. Squashes, melons, and cucumbers all like to party together, and all may cross-pollinate. If you happen to grow only one of these crops, then you're all set, but most of us want to grow at least one of each. Isolation for these insect-pollinated plants is a half a mile, so that's not very practical. You can also isolate by time. This means you won't have different varieties of, fl of flower producing flowers at the same time. For instance, you might plant summer squash and a month later plant winter squash. We often use this system for corn. However, I find it pretty limiting for cucumbers and squashes, which I like to secession plant for maximum harvests. So for plants that cross-pollinate, like squashes, in this pepper, you can purchase blossom bags. You can also reuse those organdy or tulle fabric bags that are popular at weddings and parties. If you go to the wedding area of a fabric store, you can even buy a couple yards and make the bags yourself. You can make just bags, or you can create a whole tent to go over one plant. So what the blossom bag does is keep the insects away from the female flowers. However, they still need to be pollinated. So it's your job to hand pollinate the flowers. Cucumbers and squashes and melons have male and female flowers. They are quite easy to tell apart. The male on the right has a long slender stem. The female has a bulge behind the stem like the picture on the left. You can hand pollinate one of two ways. You can remove the male flower, pull off the petals, and then brush the anthers up against the female flower. After, the po after you pollinate the flower, place the blossom bag back on and continue to keep bees away. Once the fruit starts to grow, you can remove the bag. Mark the fruit so you remember which one you want for seed saving. You can also do this with a paintbrush. Just transfer the pollen back and forth. Granted, this picture is apple trees. I have it on my list to get some good pictures of this process this summer. 
When saving for seed, you want to let the fruit mature beyond its normal eating time. Fruits will darken, and in the case of squash, the skin will get hard. Cut open your selected cucumber or squash after it's fully ripe. Scoop out the seeds and wash them to separate them from the goo. Spread them out on your drying area and let them dry for at least a week. You may see different information about placing your seeds in a glass jar or a seed packet. I just use paper packets for the most part. Then I store them in a cool, dark place. Make sure to label them well so you know what they are next year. We just went over saving seeds from beans, tomatoes, and squash. Add your questions in the comments and let's keep talking about raising seeds. Check out my videos on raising the plants next. Thanks for watching and have a fabulous day.